All right, well, we will get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this info session on scholarships. My name is Bridget Berger, and I'm the director of STEM Starter Academy here at Four Cs. Uh, and I'll be um, hosting this info session today. We have um, some amazing speakers with us from the Cape Cod Community College Educational Foundation. Judy Widger is here and Katie Hegel is here. And they're going to share with you information about the Cape Cod Community College Educational Foundation scholarships. Before we get started, can everyone please turn your camera on? And if you have chat, if you have questions as we go along, please put them in the chat. You can either direct message me or Samantha or put your question in the chat. And when we get to the Q&A at the end, we're going to um, go over the questions that you all have. So be sure to just uh, pop your questions in the chat as we go. Uh, this is our agenda for today. We've got a lot to go over, so we're going to jump right in and get started. Next slide, please. So this program is brought to you by STEM Starter Academy, and I want to tell you a little bit about STEM Starter Academy if you don't already know about it. It is a program that's funded by the Department of Higher Education here in Massachusetts, and there is a STEM Starter Academy program at every Massachusetts Community College campus. So what we do is we work with students in a variety of ways. We provide success coaching to support student retention, completion, transfer, and placement into STEM degrees, uh, certificates, and careers. So we really help students set their goals and achieve them. We've got uh, openings for success coaching uh, right now. So if you are interested, please email me and I'd be happy to talk with you about what we do and how you can be a part of it. Um, I think you'll find that STEM Starter Academy is an amazing resource. Uh, not many people know about it because sometimes it goes under other names. Sometimes we're supporting, for example, the tutoring center. So people don't realize that that's really STEM Starter Academy providing the support for the tutoring. But um, what we're doing is really um, recruiting more uh, and marketing the program itself. So. Uh, you are invited to join and be a part of STEM Starter Academy. Please reach out to me at my email there. Okay, next slide, please. I wanted to show you also uh, our Cape Cod Regional STEM Network, which is a different initiative funded by the state that's housed here at Four Cs. And the Cape Cod STEM Network works with K through 12 as well as companies. And so what we have is the Jobs and Internship Board. And uh, if you go to that link, and I will be emailing everyone the PowerPoint for this presentation. If you click on this link in the PowerPoint slides, you'll be brought to our Jobs and Internships Board. And Samantha has been working really hard for the past two weeks to list more than 20 internships that have become available at places like Woods Hole, Oceanographic Institute, uh, Marine Biological Laboratory, and other companies. Today, we just listed a few that are with an engineering company called GHD, and it's right around the corner on Route 132. So uh, if you are interested in getting a summer job or internship, be sure to check our STEM Network Jobs and Internship Board. All right, next slide, please. And I'd also like to tell you another initiative that uh, STEM Starter Academy sponsors are summer transfer academies at each of the state schools. So the community college um, system has partnered with the four year state school system and each campus has created a program that's open to anyone from any of the community colleges. It's just, we developed the program with Bridgewater. So what this is, is a summer academy where you get free tuition, you get a stipend, you get to meet all of your professors and your fellow students in STEM. And uh, this year we're doing it a bit of a hybrid or virtual program because campuses aren't quite open yet, but it's a great way if you are transferring to a four-year school in STEM, uh, be sure to check out this link. It has one application for any of the state schools, and it's a really great resource uh, that is sponsored by STEM Starter Academy. So next slide, please. All right. So now I'd like to talk with you about scholarships, STEM scholarships. So 
where are the STEM scholarships? How do you find a STEM scholarship? What are, where do you even begin? And that's what I'm hoping to walk you through in the next 20 minutes is um, you will be able to identify some of the individual scholarships that we are aware of because people email me, some of the websites that I know of where you can do a search yourself, and then some of the larger databases where you can find um, a STEM scholarship. So the message that I like to give to all of you is that basically many, from what I understand, very often scholarship, and in my experience, helping to disseminate some of these scholarships, um, sometimes uh, scholarships go uh, unawarded because students don't apply. Basically, the scholarships are there. You just need to apply. I'm not promising you're going to get every scholarship, but I'm telling you that I know personally with a few of the scholarships listed on this list that in the past we've had trouble getting students to apply. So what I would like to do is show you the scholarships that I know of and also walk you through how to apply. So uh, next slide, please. So one scholarship I'd like to tell you about is a scholarship dedicated to second year 4C STEM students. So you, you can't be a first year, uh, you know, an incoming freshman couldn't apply for this, but if you are going to be at 4Cs next fall, you can apply for this scholarship. And this is a scholarship that was created by uh, two re uh, retirees who basically have uh, started this scholarship to support community college students and they earmark a certain number of spots for four C students. So uh, in my understanding, there are at least two uh, for four C students and the information that you need is on that link there. It takes you to this web website pictured. It has a, a short essay, like a question essay, it has some basic information. You do have to verify with Sherry and financial aid, but it's, um, it's a pretty simple application. It's a couple pages long and you can turn that into me or you can turn that into Sherry Anderson in financial aid. And what this scholarship entails is it comes with uh, $1,000 a semester and mentoring. So what they do is they pair you with someone who really supports you through the course of your studies. Um, and it's been a very positive experience for the students who have taken part in it. So uh, if you will be here next year uh, in STEM, uh, please apply for that scholarship. This is one of those that we haven't had students apply to. So last year, he only got one student who, was, um, who had applied from 4Cs. So as a result, last year, there was only one 4C student. So there are two spots, please apply to that one. I'll help you with your application as well. Uh, next slide, please. Here's another uh, program that I found out about. This is in particular called uh, the Women in Defense Scholar Program. And so if, uh, if you're in engineering, uh, I know that slide looks a little blurry to me, but um, there's information there about this scholarship and that title is actually the link to that uh, scholarship. So if you are in an engineering program, um, this might be a, a scholarship for you. This one came across our radar. Um, and I think this one looked like, looked like a good one that might fit some of our female engineering students. So keep that one in mind. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a local scholarship put out by Friends of Chatham Waterways. So if you are a Marine or if you're an environmental studies student or environmental technology student, or even if you're a biology student or an engineering student, this might be a good uh, scholarship for you. The application is March 31st and uh, the link there takes you to their website. So it seemed um, kind of wide ranging. I think it's worth looking into uh, also because it's uh, dedicated just to students um, on Cape Cod. Okay, next slide, please. So um, this is another, uh, 
scholarship um, that I found. So Lockheed Martin has a facility in Marion, so not far from the Cape. Um, so you might apply there if you, I know we have a couple engineering students on this call. I think this is a great scholarship to look into because it's a significant scholarship. I think that you guys coming from the Cape in engineering could potentially have a really good shot at this. It's a national scholarship, but the fact that they have a facility located so close to us um, is a really good uh, match, I thought. And the other type of uh, individual scholarship that I wanted to talk about are uh, employee scholarships. So please keep in mind, if one of your parents works at that facility in Marion, you're eligible to apply for a specific employee scholarship. So think about where you work or where your parents work, because that's often a way to find these individual scholarships that really only apply to a dedicated group um, that you may be a part of. Um, okay, next slide, please. All right, another place to look for scholarships is at your host institution where you plan on transferring. So I don't know if this is blurry on your end or if you can see that fine print there, but I went to Bridgewater and looked at their website and I went to their uh, financial aid page and they have a list of scholarships. If you are going to Bridgewater as a transfer student, you should look at Bridgewater on their financial aid page because for example, one of these is a chemistry scholarship. Another one is a biology scholarship. Another is just a general scholarship. There are tons of scholarships and they can be available wherever you are going. So it might take a little bit of juggling on your part because if you don't know exactly where you're going yet, you might have to figure out how many of these you want to apply to or not. But I'm letting you know that there are scholarships available at the four-year schools where you're going to transfer into. So for some of those students, I know a few of you are about to graduate who are on this, this Zoom call, um, be sure to look at your host institution for some of these individual scholarships that you, may, that you might find there. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So now I'd like to tell you about one of the websites that we work with. This, this platform is called STEAM ID. And if you were at the last webinar that we did on internships, you've already heard about STEAM ID because mainly what they do are internships, but they also have an entire tab just about scholarships. The scholarships that they tend to feature are uh, national scholarships. Um, they're not those individual or local scholarships. They're really big platforms. Um, they're really big national companies. But I, and for the most of those scholarships, the deadlines are in November, December. Like they're much earlier in the scholarship season. So um, it's worth looking at this next year. It's worth being aware of for internships. Um, but there are still a few scholarships that are available. And when I checked yesterday that were listed as still having deadlines in March, STEAM ID is just a, an amazing platform with a ton of information. So I encourage you to check out STEAM ID. Okay, next slide, please. All right. So another resource where you can find uh, a great collection of scholarships are on the Cape Cod Foundation website. The deadline for these scholarships is April 1st, and they have a pretty simple application process. I just cut and pasted the bullet points that they put on their website. You watch a tutorial video, they have one application and you find it at that page. You do have to have your transcripts ready. Um, you do have to have a letter of recommendation. Um, but other than that, it's very straightforward in that they match you with the scholarships that are uh, right for you. So I encourage you to check out the Cape Cod Foundation and see what, uh, what comes up for you. Okay, next slide, please. 
And then here are some online databases. So I say proceed with caution here, because why? Because in my experience, these were kind of overwhelming. I know that you guys only have so much time. These databases have just hundreds, if not thousands of scholarships listed. They're national, they apply to all different kinds of applicants. It's not, I'm gonna say probably not as likely of, as to get one of these scholarships as it is for the Cape Cod scholarships that you're gonna find on the individual ones that I just shared with you on the uh, website for the Cape Cod Foundation or our educational foundation that you're going to hear about in a minute. Um, but I wanted you to be aware of that, especially if you fall into specific categories where you know that you are a woman in aerospace engineering, you know, I think it would be worthwhile looking up on, you know, uh, Peterson's database or scholarships.com and typing in those keywords to see maybe there's a scholarship because that's such a, a narrow field, you may, um, you may really uh, be eligible to apply for some of those specialized scholarships. But I want to just encourage you to look at the scholarships that I showed you at the beginning of the presentation, start there with our local scholarships and our regional found grant foundations um, to, uh, to start your application process there. And if you have time, yes, then go to these big databases. Okay, next slide, please. So where to begin? So one thing I always tell our students is you have to make a list of your keywords. You have to know what describes you. And sometimes we don't think about that because we're too close to ourselves. We don't take a step back and think, all right, well, what are my keywords? You know, it's some of the obvious ones, like are you male or female? Or if you are from a minority group, um, those are ones that you might commonly think of. But if you think about things like your major, you know, sometimes with the more specialized major, you're going to see degrees that will pop out from those big databases, specifically and especially at the four year schools, tailored specifically to your field of study. The other thing is think about your activities and especially things you've done before. Like, were you in scouts? Were you in um, certain clubs? Were you, um, you'd be surprised. Some of the, some of the scholarships are really narrow. They're like, you know, they take a few of these keywords and combine them. So if you spend some time thinking about those um, keywords that apply to you, I think it'll be easier when you look at these big lists of scholarships for the ones that'll be a match to you to pop out. So think also about your heritage. I've seen scholarships for people of certain backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds. Very often there are scholarships earmarked for students um, through their church. I also know that there are scholarships in those lists that, um, that uh, I talked to you about, like with the Cape Cod Foundation, earmarked for specific high school graduates. So just for Nauset High School. And then also, of course, for the transfer students, there are going to be special scholarships if you're a transfer student. So you have to make your list of your keywords just to get started. That's a good place to get started. That's an easy place to get started. And then what? Then I encourage you to get organized. What I'm recommending students do is keep a notebook or even better, maybe a little spreadsheet, maybe a little Excel sheet where you can start to jot down the scholarships that you're interested in and maybe some of those deadlines, and maybe whether they require a transcript or do they require an essay or not. If you wanna to apply to five or six, I think you know that's where you kind of need a spreadsheet to get organized. Maybe a one, two, or three, you might not need to jot down so many notes. I do, but it's up to you. I'm gonna encourage you to get organized. So um, that's the next step. And then the other thing you wanna do is you wanna ask for your references early. Don't wait because also everyone else is asking all the faculty for references. So I think you wanna ask someone your best reference. It would be a great idea to send them an email this week and say these words, can you serve as a reference for me? Thank you. It's simple as that. And we all know what you're asking about. And then we'll say, sure, what are you talking? What is this for? Okay, it's for a scholarship. What do you need? I need a letter 
okay, when do you need it by? You know, and that's how the conversation can go. So you can just ask one of your faculty, you know, I've really enjoyed being in your class. Um, would you be able to serve as a reference for me? And that's a good icebreaker to, to then talk about the various types of letters that you might need. You might need one for transfer. You might need one for a slightly different type of scholarship. You can talk to them about what you need, but you want to ask them and don't surprise them last minute, right? You want to get your transcripts ready. So from what I'm seeing, a lot of them require just an unofficial transcript, but at some point they'll need an official transcript from the registrar. Uh, I can help you with that also if you need that. I'm going to encourage everyone to start your FAFSA, get that done. Um, and to start your essays as well, because mostly I see that there's an essay required. So toward that end, next Friday, I'm gonna have a hangout on my Zoom room and we're gonna work on people's essays. We're gonna brainstorm, we're gonna edit, whoever shows up and whatever you wanna do, we're gonna have an hour next Friday um, where we're going to have a uh, scholarship essay hangout. So that link will take you right there. And, um, and I look forward to seeing you all there. We have information about it on the last slide as well. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so now I'd like to turn it over to Judy and Katie, and they're gonna talk about the foundation that exists at Cape Cod Community College. This is an amazing resource. Please, please follow up with all of this information that you're about to hear. Katie and Judy, take it away. Hi, my name is Judy and I work up in the Educational Foundation Office. And we're very excited that our application process is going to be opening tomorrow and will be open until March 12th. This year we have over 130 scholarships for about $300,000 that we're going to award um, for incoming students, current students and students that are either graduating or transferring and going off to um, another school. So I'm just gonna go over this, over the general application process. So everybody for our application is going to have to write three essays. They are, what are your educational goals? What are your career goals? And how will a scholarship help you achieve those goals? And that can also include if you've had to overcome any hardships um, that led you to where you are and especially how a scholarship is going to help you. So everybody should be prepared to write those three essays. Um, other scholarships might include other things like your FAFSA score. Uh, you can get that off of the report that they send you when you fill it out. The financial aid office can also help you get that score. Some scholarships require transcripts. Some scholarships require um, a letter of reference or it's not a letter of reference. A reference, everything is done online. So whoever your reference is will fill out a form online. They don't have to supply a specific um, a specific letter. Can I have the next slide, please? So we have three main categories of scholarships and it is very important that you choose the correct one. You are only going to be awarded at a scholarship in one of the categories and if you, apply to the wrong category, you're not going to get a scholarship. They're not interchangeable. So the first one is non-commencement. And that is, are you a current student at Four Cs and are going to be taking classes there in the fall? Or you're an incoming student and going to be taking classes at Four Cs in the fall? It's basically, what are you going to be doing next fall? The next category is commencement scholarships. And that's if you're, you're a current student now, or you have just graduated in whatever January or whatever it is um, and you're going to be transferring or going on to another institution and taking classes at another place in the fall. So that's that category of scholarships. And then the third category is for Project Forward students who are taking the vocational classes at four C's but it's a very specific program. Um, so those are the three categories. Like I said, it's very important that you pick the correct category um, to apply to. Next slide. 
So the first thing you're going to do, and Katie will walk through the steps of this a little bit more, is everybody is asked to fill out a questionnaire. It's important that you fill out all the questions on this because it's this is going to match you to the scholarships that you're eligible for. So say there's a scholarship for students that live in Mashpee. Well, if you don't live in Mashpee, you're not going to see this scholarship. But if you put Mashpee, then it will show you this scholarship. So it will help guide you to which scholarships you should apply for, which ones you're eligible for. And that's why it's important that you fill out this information thoroughly and correctly. Um, after you go through that, you will need to fill out a common application, which you will fill out once. You will have to re-answer some of the same questions that you filled out on the questionnaire. We can't see the questionnaire. We can only see it when you fill it out on the application. So if it asks for what is your GPA and you fill it out on the questionnaire, but not the application, I can't see what your GPA is. So I'm going to exclude you because I need to see your GPA. So it's very important that you answer all of these, all of these questions. Um, as you go through these things, it will, um, if there's no other information needed, then you'll just click submit at the end of it. If they ask you for other information, then that's where you would do it. Um, next slide, please. So some of the other things are like, after the common application, if there's nothing else under unique, it will just say there's no other additional information needed and you will just click submit. Sometimes they ask an additional question. It's a simple yes or no you know, question. You just answer that. Um, sometimes there's an additional essay. If it wants you to have a reference, it will give you information, a, a form that you need to fill out with the contact name, and their email address. Make sure that they, you know their email address correctly so that they will get this. And then again, the reference will not submit a letter. They will be sent a form to fill out. Um, like Bridget said, do not wait until the last minute. We will get many uh, professors that say, I didn't get it to the last minute. And that's just how it is. It's an online form. It's an online process. There are deadlines. We we have no say. We can't accept anything after the deadline. The computer shuts it off. Just nothing will be able to be submitted. Um, so that's kind of the overview. And like I said, it is going to be open until March 12th. Then we will make our decisions uh, in early May. We will let students know um, if they've received something. We usually have a very nice ceremony called the Evening of Excellence. Uh, we're not able to have that last year. Probably will not be able to have it again this year, but we're not sure. Um, but we will let students know what they've received in May. Um, so that's it for the general stuff. And Katie will show you actual screenshots from the process. OK, so the first place you'll begin is going to our website. So that's cccfoundation.org, or I'm sure there's a way to get through, to it through the Four Cs website. And then about halfway down, you'll see a button that says apply for scholarship. You'll click on that, and that's where you'll see the three boxes that Judy was talking about, non-commencement, commencement, and project forward. Likely, you'll be in non-commencement or commencement. If you don't know what project forward is, then that's probably not the one for you. Um, and so you'll choose just one of those. And then you'll click apply and then begin search. So this will bring you to the questionnaire that Judy was talking about. Okay, so that'll bring you to the questionnaire and then you'll just fill out basic questions about yourself. And what this will do is it will generate a custom list of scholarships based on what you answer for each question. And you'll click off each scholarship that you want. Um, so you could probably click off all of them and you're going to save them to your application. Um, so at this point, and I feel like this is where a lot of students get confused, um, a sign in box pops up. Um, so you'll want to toggle over and click create new account because you don't have an account already. 
and then you'll fill in your basic information. Yep, so that's where it says to create the new account. Okay, so once you create your account, it's going to pop up with a box of your applications, which are the ones that you had checked off previously. So it's very important to start with the top one, the 2021, either non-commencement or commencement common application. Um, so this is where you'll be writing your three, thank you, your three uh, required essays. So those are what are your educational goals, what are your career goals, and how will a scholarship help you achieve your goals? So I would say the most important tip that I can give you for these essays is not to write it on your phone, um, which seems slightly obvious, but a lot of students we noticed did type it up on their phone. And the reason this is so important is because our evaluators will review mechanics and um, content. So if there are a lot of spelling and grammar errors, then your total score could go down and you might be bumped to the bottom of the list. Um, so once you're done with the common application, you can go ahead and click on all of the applications under it. And it's likely that you won't need to fill out any more app, any more information. So you can just hit submit for those. Some of them, like Judy was saying, um, require additional information, such as an additional essay or just maybe one additional question. Um, but the bulk of the work is in the non-commencement or commencement common application. So that's why that first one is so important. Um, yeah, so, and then the deadline is important March 12th. And like Judy was saying, it's important to get your references if the um, application requires a reference if to get it in by the deadline of March 12th. So they have time to send in that. And that is it. So I just want to say also, um, I know there's some confusion when people go to sign in or sign up. This is separate from your college account. So hmm. don't try and put in your college password because that that's not going to work. This is a standalone system. You can use any email address that you want. Um, a lot of people choose to use their college one to keep everything all together, but you can use any, any email. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's a separate system so that, um, your password that you use for the college won't work. Great, thank you for all of that information. So um, we have a few questions in the chat and Samantha's gonna ask the questions um, that we have so far. Students who are on this call, please uh, ask your questions. Now's the time, uh, pop them in the chat. And uh, we have a few minutes now for uh, Q and A. Sam, can you uh, start with the questions? Of course. The first question is, how long does it take to complete the online basic application? I think that's for Judy and Katie. It really does not take long. It Most of it is very obvious questions of, you know, your name, your address, what is your major? Um, are you a single parent, ages of your children? The longest part is going to be the essays. So perhaps, you know, I've told everybody now that there's no surprise. Those are what the three essays are for everybody. Um, and they should be fairly easy and straightforward. It, if there are no additional questions, it should not take you anything more than half an hour to fill out this application. And, you know, we just encourage everybody there's, and, I have not found an instance where anybody applied didn't qualify for at least five scholarships. Now that doesn't mean that they got them, but we have things that are based on GPA, based on financial need, based on where you live, what you study. Um, the variables are endless. <laughs> so everybody would be eligible for something. Great, thank you. So another question in the chat is, is there a limit to how many you can apply for? Not from us. Apply for as once you go through that questionnaire, maybe it will only show you five that it thinks that you're matched to. It may show you 20. You can apply for as many as as you want. Yeah, it just depends on how many 
um, pop up after you fill out the questionnaire, depending on how you answer the question. Wonderful. Another question is, what is a skill? What is some advice you would give to someone when giving when filling out these applications? Well, like I said, I would say think about the essays ahead of time, maybe type them up in Microsoft Word or just somewhere that's not your phone, maybe have a thesaurus open, um, just to make sure the spelling and grammar is up to par. So the reviewers will give you a, that's like already half your score right there. So that's what I would say. <laughs> and make sure you apply for the correct category. Yes. Yeah. I have a question. So in when a student is is talking about their, you know, how this scholarship is going to help those career goals, my question to you is, you know, how how personal do you do you want the students to get? You know, like how much is too much? You know, if 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 they're telling their story, I guess I want to clarify for them, um, you know, are you really looking to understand what their situation is and 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 um in, in really personal ways? Is that okay to share uh, the, the hardships that they're going through? Yes, it's whatever they feel comfortable with. I mean, honestly, it's, um, it's hard to read some of the essays because of the hardships that some people have gone through, but it helps us understand why this scholarship is so meaningful and how hard they are really trying to continue their education. So, you know, somebody that's living in their car and still is taking classes. Yes, we would like to know that. If they feel comfortable sharing, we, you know, if they, but honestly, the last thing we want to hear is somebody saying, I could use the money. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't, I don't want people to make things up, but you know, we do want to understand why this will be meaningful for you because, you know, we have 130 scholarships to, to hand out. Last year, we had about 450 students apply. So we do need to make some decisions. So we wanna make sure that it's being used in a meaningful way. Thank you. Yes, I find that too, that it's really helpful when students give a context that, you know, maybe um, they're the only one working in the household right yes. now. And they're they're really bearing the, the burden of supporting the family and that they have a family. A lot of our students, as you know, are older students and they may already have a family of their own and that you know if they're trying to work and go to school at the same time a scholarship can really make the difference so um yeah that's, that's yeah good. we have we have several scholarships that are for single parents um specifically and we have several scholarships that are for non-traditional age students that have been out of school for 10 years or more so and we have a specific question that asks that. So that is one of the things that will qualify you for certain scholarships. So it, yes, all any information that they feel comfortable sharing is important. Thank you. So how long are the essays? I'm curious, are they 500 words? Are they just to get an idea? Essay can mean different things. I think we, uh, you know what, I did I did look, but I, I think we said between 100 and 500 words. Okay, up to 500. So that's a yeah. few paragraphs to a page or more. Yeah, I yeah. mean, so that can be, okay. Um, so how about any of the stu other students who maybe didn't ask a question yet? Do you have a question that you'd like to ask in the chat? Okay, waiting here. Anybody? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead. Hi. I was trying to type in the chat, but it won't allow me to. Okay, um, okay. So I wanted to ask if you're not qualified for the FASCA, um, are we, can we still apply for like the general scholarships? Yes. Some of our scholarships are based on financial need, but mm -hmm. so it's probably half and half that are for students that have filled out the FAFSA and about the other half, it, it, it doesn't matter. The, the donor has said they don't care about that. 
It's more based on your merit on what you're accomplishing. You know, and some of them are, do you belong to a certain club on campus or are you part of PTK? There's specific scholarships for that. So that's why we encourage everybody to fill out the application and see what you're matched to because I, I you know, there's 130 scholarships, there's 130 different criteria. They're all so different. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. Here's another question in the chat. Can an essay be too long? Um, well, you only have 500 words. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, write what you feel are the, the most important parts. Um, that answer the the question. Um, and like I said, there are some that will ask for some more specific questions. Like there's one of, you know, how has your studies changed your worldview? I, I mean, so, you know, there are some that will ask something more specific, but on the general ones, we don't need your entire life story. Um, but, you know, things that are, are relevant to your current education. I would say on the shorter end is better, um, seeing as there's a lot of applications co that come through. And to keep so. it on point, keep it on, keep yeah. it on message. Yeah. Um, how about um, requirements for, um, you know, is there any catch? Like, is this really just money that a student receives or do they have to get a certain grade? Like, let's say if they're transferring to a four-year school, you know, is it conditional on them passing all their classes or getting A's or, you know, is there any kind of string attached there with, with the scholarships? Uh, well, so, some of them sort of, but, but we're pretty upfront about it. Like, most of them that have a GPA requirement, there's a few that say that they must continue to have that GPA requirement, um, but none of it's, you know, that it needs to be a 4.0. Um, but I should say, if you're continuing on at four C's and you get a scholarship, the funds are, we, we let the financial aid office know, and when you enroll for the fall, it automatically gets applied to your bill. So we're not sending students checks directly it's going to get applied to your bill at the college. If you're going on to another college, um, we need to see proof of enrollment, which can be a copy of your bill or your class schedule, something of that nature to show that you're actually enrolled in classes at that other institution. And then we send the check directly to the other institution. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, there's there's really no catches. We've got very generous donors that want to see students succeed. We're very thankful. That's amazing. And so one last question, is there a citizenship requirement? If so, what what is it? What what requirements? There is not. Great. There is not. Um so yeah, like I said there and in fact, we we have a couple of scholarships that are specifically for international students and um, for ESOL students. So again, the variety is just <laughs> it's just phenomenal. But like I said, anybody would be eligible for at least five or six scholarships, I would imagine. Wonderful, thank you. So now is the last chance to put a question in the chat. And otherwise, we will move on um, to the next slide, Brian. Last chance for questions in the chat. Here's one. Um, do you have to be, uh, this might be related to the FAFSA question, but the question is, do you have to be eligible for financial aid to be eligible for a scholarship? No. Great. No, but if. If it says that you need to have it in the questionnaire, it will ask you if do you have a FAFSA on file with the college, and if you answer yes, and it then matches you to those scholarships, a lot of them are going to ask you what your expected family contribution score is. So you will need to know what that score is 
Um, and then you just put that number in the box and move on to the next question. Okay. Great. Thank you. So um, we have a few upcoming events. So um, one of them I mentioned to you, and, and I'll go over that in a minute, but on the 23rd next week, there is a STEM Professionals of Color Career Panel. This is offered by STEM Starter Academy at Mass Bay Community College, and it's in celebration of Black History Month. Uh, I encourage you to check that out. The link that is here um, is clickable and you can register for that session. Right after this, we're gonna be sending you this PowerPoint. So you'll be able to click on that link. And then please join us next Thursday at 2 p.m. We're gonna do a hangout. I'll be there to help you with any questions you have about anything that you've heard today. You could bring your essay drafts. We could talk about them. We could outline uh, a strategy for you to answer those essay questions. Whatever you'd like to go over, we're gonna do a hangout at two o'clock. The link to join is also there in that slide. I'd like to thank Judy and Katie for being here today to talk to us all about the Cape Cod Educational Foundation scholarships and the application process. That was really, really informative. So everyone, please apply. There are lots of dollars out there with your name on it. So please apply. Um, and you know, STEM Starter Academy is here to help you with every step of the, of the process. So don't be shy. My email is bburger at capecod.edu. I'm here to help you um, be successful in STEM. Um, and so with that, we will wrap up today. Judy and Katie, I hope we can do this uh, every year. Happy to help. Thank you all so much. Everyone have a great rest of the afternoon.